Hey there, good to see you. Today we're taking a look at an interesting camera accessory that is designed for videographers, content creators, YouTubers, that effectively does one thing. Push the camera out and pull the camera back in. And that's really all it does. But for me, and I bet there's other people who would probably feel the same, this is all at the end of the day that I would ever truly want or need. I mean, it might be nice, don't get me wrong, to have like some fancy panning and tilting and rotation and all that kind of stuff with the camera. But when it comes to the type of you know content that I create, especially like product reviews, B-roll, that kind of stuff, all I really want is just a simple you know push and a simple pull just to give a little extra movement and a little bit of energy, a little bit of depth instead of faking it in post. Now, if you're looking for something more complex, like the ability to pan, tilt, and rotate the camera while it is sliding back and forth on the slider, that is technically possible by adding on an additional gimbal, also made by Moza, that connects to the slider, that interfaces with it, uses the same mobile app, and then you may use the two together. Moza did not provide me with that gimbal, so I wasn't able to test the gimbal with the slider. They just sent me the slider itself but that is an option if you're looking for something a little more. Before we go any further though, I need to let you know that this video is not paid for, it's not sponsored. Moza did provide me with the SlidePod Pro and I get to keep this product after producing this review. I am under no obligation to say uh, anything. As a matter of fact, I'm not even under any obligation to review this product, but I received it and I started testing and experimenting with it and trying it out for myself. And I thought it was interesting and I thought it would be something worth sharing. And everything that you're going to hear in this video is my honest and unbiased opinion about this product and whether I think it's worth buying. Okay, so again, the SlidePod Pro is effectively a mashup of a slider and a monopod in one product. Now, it may not look like a monopod right now, but the SlidePod Pro does come with three aluminum legs and it has, you know, a balancing, you know, pin up here on top that locks and unlocks like a traditional monopod so that you can, you know, move the monopod around. However, it's also like not a monopod because this cannot be raised and lowered manually. Everything is electronic. If the battery inside of it were dead and it needed to be recharged, there would be no way to use this as just a, a normal monopod. It has to have power. Okay, so speaking of the power and the battery, there is a lithium ion battery inside of here and I'll put some stats up here about it. And generally speaking, you can expect to get about 90 minutes of continuous use out of this battery when it is fully charged. And that is 90 minutes of the camera just telescoping out and back again. If you're not using it continuously, well, then you know you can use it for far longer. You could actually use it for hours. But when you need to recharge it, it actually has a USB-C input over here. And that is one of the things that one of the pros of the SlidePod Pro, I think. You can just plug it in and charge it as you need to. So to control the SlidePod Pro using the slider itself, there are three buttons on the slider. Down here at the bottom, there is a power button, which uh, when you long press, it boots up. And then when you see the green light, green means go. Then there are two buttons over here on the side for up and down. You just long press on up in order to move the camera outward. And then you just double click the power button in order to stop it. Or you can... Uh, long press on down and that will bring uh, the camera back as well. Now, if you want something a little bit more than that, which you probably will, that's where the mobile app comes in. Controlling the slider is really simple with the app. There's just this you know, vertical uh, interface here and you just slide up the, the little circle to where you want uh, the camera to end up and then you can just pull it back and it comes back like so. Now the speed at which it's moving right now is full speed and this is also configurable. You can you know, drop this down as slow as you want. Something like 15 is probably a little more realistic. So now let's try a long press on upward and now it's moving much, uh, much slower. You can actually drop this all the way down. Let's just try it all the way down at one. And it's definitely moving because I can see it moving in the app but you probably barely notice anything in the video. I'm looking at a monitor over here and the <laughs> it is like, yeah, it is moving really, really slow. And you may also enable looping in here so the camera just moves back and forth continuously if that's something of interest to you. Now, regular mode is pretty much, you know, just like, you know, pushing the buttons on the slider itself. No real difference there. However, there are a few little extra options that you can enable. For example, there's an option to do a slow start, which I just enabled. So now if we slide it, 
You can see that it slowly ramps up. And then we have gear shift mode, which is similar to regular, except this is kind of like shifting gears manually in a car. Like, you know, you start at first, second, third, fourth. You set a speed, you set whatever your maximum speed is that you want. You tap on upwards and then the camera slowly moves. It's kind of like, again, like first, second, third, it's slowly ramping up and then it gets to its maximum speed. And then it starts drifting back down again and it'll do a similar motion coming back this way. So if you're looking for like a really slow incremental start, it's almost like a bell curve. And then we have acceleration mode, which is similar to gear shift mode, except instead of using an easing curve, you know, like this, it's more of a, of a linear uh, kind of like ramp up towards the top speed. So the top speed is not in the middle of the transition, it's at the very end. So right now I have it set to 50 like I did before with gear shift. And if I tap on upwards, the camera begins slowly moving out and it's actually moving much slower compared to gear shift now because the top speed is not until the very end. Now there are some additional ways to control the slider under the creative video section. And in here you're able to do things like assign waypoints if you wanted to assign multiple steps within that one fluid movement if you wanted to break that up somehow. There's also some functionality in here for uh, creating time-lapse images. Now, the quirky thing about this is that there is no control for the camera. Like you can't plug the camera into the slide pod and trigger the shutter without the gimbal. Like you would need to get that Moza gimbal in order to uh, unlock that additional functionality. So just know that while this does technically support time-lapse, it's not the most sophisticated time-lapse tool. And then there's an additional option here for silent mode. It's like, yes, it is quieter, but really all it's doing, as far as I can tell, is just limit the speed of the slider. Which actually brings me to one of the cons and probably one of the most important cons of the SlidePod Pro, if you haven't figured it out by now, the motor in here is quite loud. Now, in this video, I'm sure it's probably going to sound even louder because I have a microphone just literally right here overhead. Not something that I think you would want to use if say you were doing some type of videography work involving a live microphone in a room, like an interview setup, something like that. I don't think the SlidePod Pro is good for that. What the SlidePod Pro I think is really good for is for any type of video where there's a voiceover, where there's music. In other words, you're not using the audio track at all. There are two large you know, plate mounts here on the bottom of it. Obviously one is being used right now, but the other one is pretty much the same as the one up here on top. There are four threads down here. There are two quarter 20 and two three eighths of an inch that you could use with a fluid video head plate, a Arca Swiss plate, a Manfrotto plate. The full reach of this is like a little over uh, 20 inches. I'll put the numbers up here on the screen, but it's pretty far. It's a, it's a pretty good distance. So it can easily get out, you know, I'll just, pull it in like so, so you can see. So it can easily get out over a table. If you are using a ball head, like I would, well, first of all, I'm not sure a ball head is really the best approach for this. I mean, but if you do use one, you wanna make sure that it is a very durable, very strong ball head that is designed to carry quite a bit of weight. Fluid video heads in my, in my experience with this work better. When you're using this in a lateral fashion like so, uh, the stem and the hardware here can withstand, I'll, I'll put the official numbers up here on screen, but it's like right around like seven and a half pounds from what I recall, somewhere around there. Whereas when you're using it in a vertical orientation, it's like about 13 pounds. So it can definitely handle more weight vertically. Seven and a half, eight pounds is within reason, I think, because like a standard DSLR mirrorless camera plus a lens is somewhere usually around like four pounds, five pounds. The main thing to just keep an eye on, the main thing to be cautious with is how you mount it and just make sure that you, you know, you're mounting it to something that has some substance to it. And also make sure, by the way, you have one of your legs here, you know, like pointed in the direction of where the slider is going. Because if you have it like the opening here and the slider is going this way, it's absolutely going to tip over. And kind of like a C stand or a light stand, like you always want you know, a leg uh, pointed out directly to wherever the camera is traveling to. So this mini fluid head here is similar to a fluid head uh, like this one here, where there is one axis of movement, uh, just forward and backward. There's not a lateral 
uh, tilt. This has an Arca Swiss plate up here at the top, and this plate also rotates, so you're able to, you know, spin the camera around and have it face up, have it face down, have it face out to the side. You can remove uh, the uh, fluid video head. It's not permanently attached to the slide pod. You can just take it off. So as far as uh, like bounce and sway is concerned, like, you know, those little micro jitters that you sometimes get in, in video footage when you're using a, a slider with a camera, you will see it, but the good news is it's really not that much. I mean, I, you know, tested this a variety of different ways and you can, if you really look for it, you can see sometimes a little bit of movement, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, uh, like micro jitter in the footage. I'm not sure if the average person is even going to notice, but you know, if you're particular about it, like I am, uh, you can always use something like a warp stabilizer effect in Premiere or whatever software you're using, or you may use uh, Topaz Video AI that has a great stabilizer in it, in addition to other functions as well, like slow motion and other stuff. If you've never heard of Video AI, I, I reviewed it a few months ago. It's a fantastic piece of software. If you're into video, uh, check that out. And the good news is, is that the less you know, movement that there is, the less jittering in the footage, well, the less cropping that a stabilizing effect or tool uh, we need to do to your footage thereafter. But remember that how you have the slider mounted is also a contributing factor to how stable and how smooth your footage is going to be. Moza claims in their marketing that the SlidePod Pro is durable enough uh, to be used outdoors, that it's weatherproof. I don't know though. I'm going to have to take them at their word for that because this part up here makes me rather nervous. You know, this part here where these rods extend outward, just the thought of getting like dirt or grit or sand up in here would be pretty bad. If that were to happen, well, then there would be, you know, like some additional bumps and hops in the footage and would really ruin the, you know, how smooth the mechanism is here. I think I'm going to err on the side of caution with this and just not use it outdoors and just avoid that situation altogether. And then finally, there is the price. Now, at the time of this video here in the United States, the Slipi Pro retails for $600, which isn't cheap, uh, but it's also not super expensive either like it's it's um it's not as expensive say as like a you know a mirrorless camera body and a lens but then again it is a one trick pony like it does one thing it just you know it just pushes a camera out pushes it back in but that alone could be worth six hundred dollars to some of you you don't want the cumbersome nature and just awkward setup of a tabletop slider but you also don't want to use a gimbal either and you just want something that's smooth and linear that will do the job, well, that is what the SlidePod Pro is ultimately for. So I think it really depends on, you know, how often you see yourself using it and whether you'll ultimately, whether it will ultimately pay for itself. As far as me and, you know, the type of video work that I do here on my YouTube channel, is this something that I see myself utilizing in the future, especially with like product review videos and, you know, when creating B-roll, stuff like that? Absolutely, I think this provides just the right amount of movement that I would want creatively in my footage. I'm perfectly happy with like a linear push and pull. I don't really feel a need for like fancy pans and tilts and rotations and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's fine and that'd be cool to have. And that is certainly an option by picking up that additional gimbal. But for me, the slider itself is perfectly fine. Uh, you can expect to see uh, some footage here on my channel later on in the future uh, that is uh, using this in the background. Thanks to Moza for supplying me with uh, the slider. I appreciate it and thank you for being here and uh, I will see you next time.